Groovy Script Test Step, Context Test Runner. This is Lecture 19 of Section 5. Let's begin. In this lecture, we will study how to clone a test suite and a test case. We will learn about the test runner variable, stop and fail a test case, finding the status of a test, finding time taken to execute a test step, we will learn how to navigate to various levels with test runner variable. With drill test run context object, we will learn about this. Accessing context object across test cases. Executing a test step in test case from test step in same test case. Executing a test step in test case from test step in a different test case. Executing test case step with Groovy. Executing test request test step from Groovy test step if response is not present. Setting parameters in the request from Groovy test step. And all of this followed by a quiz in the end. Now let's learn how to clone a test suite in a test case. You open a test suite and you go to the place where the test cases are listed in the test cases tab. You right click and you click on the clone test suite. You can also press F9 for the same function. Once you click on it, a dialog box opens which first asks you for the test suite name it asks you for the tra target project whether you want to create the test suite in the same project or in a, in a new project and then it asks you to give your description of the clone after you've done with everything click OK now sometimes when there are inconsistencies uh, this dialog box open which checks for the inconsistencies in the test suite for example, over here we have an inconsistency with the property test request. So what you do is you just disable the property transfer and then you click OK. After doing that, you can see that in the same project we have a copy of the same test suite. Similarly, you click on the test case and you right click and you go to clone test case or you can also press F9 for the same thing and a similar dialog box opens that asks you for the test case name you say that it's a copy of test case 1 it asks you for the target project it asks you for the test suite that where you want to create this clone after you've done with all of this you click OK and then you can see that this, uh, the copy of this test case has been created in the same test suite similarly you have test steps and you can right click on the test step on the particular test step and you can clone it. It's going to ask you the same question again that what is the name of the new clone that you want to create? The target project. This time it's going to ask you for the target test suite and the target test case. So after deciding all that, you click OK and you see that we have a copy of a test step in the same test, te test case and the same test suite because we mentioned that in the dialog box. So this is how we clone a test suite, a test case and the test step. Now let's have a look at the test runner variable. This is the object that actually executes the test case by cycling through the test steps and executing them. It exposes methods related to test execution and the underlying object model via the test case property. Some of the user scenarios are test runner.test case. This is used to get hold of the containing test case from which all other objects in the project can be accessed and manipulated. Then we can use testrunner.fail or testrunner.cancel to abort the ongoing test case when an error occurs. And finally, we can alter the execution of the test steps by using the testrunner go to step by name or testrunner run test step by name. We can transfer the execution to another step than the one after the script test step in the test case. This is an extremely important method. Finding status of a test. Okay, so how do we find the status of a test? First of all, we import the test runner dot status. Then we get the test case by using the test runner dot test case as mentioned in the previous slide. Then we run the test case synchronously using the run function. 
Then we need to show that it worked out okay. So we write in the log using the runner dot status to write the status of the test, whether it did the test worked fine, it was successful, it was a failure. It all of these is going to come in the runner dot status. Then we can if the test fails, we can also find the reason of its failure by using runner dot reason. So these are the various functions which you can use and you can find the status of a test. Now let's study the visual test run test run context object. This is the object that contains the context information for a test case run session. Now this table specifies the method summary of this object. We have a get current step uh, method which has the return type test step. It gets you the current step. Then we have the get current step index which returns an int. We have a get get test runner which returns a test case runner. Then we have a get property string which returns an object. We have a get test case which returns a test case. We have set current step because and we give the the, the current step as an index to the function and then we have a set property where we set the property of the test case. So these are extremely extremely useful methods which can come in handy. Accessing context object across test cases. The script test step is the most powerful test step in SOAP UI in the sense that it allows you to do more or less whatever you might need to within the execution of your tests. The contained script will be executed each time the test step is run and can do more or less anything possible with the built-in APIs available that is GRE, SOAP UI and all dependencies etc. Now when created the test the script test step window will look as, fo as follows. The arrow at the top executes the current script. The log tab at the bottom shows any log statements written by the script. These are available in the main window scripts tab when the editor is closed during the execution also. As can be seen from the label at the top right, the following variables are available in your script. It says script is invoked with log, the log variable, the context variable and the test runner variable. So you can use all these variables and their respective methods that we've discussed in the previous slides to construct a script test step. So those three variables that we discussed were test runner, context and log. Now test runner we've discussed in quite detail in the previous slides. The context you've also discussed in the previous lecture, but there is a summary that it's a test case run context object which, is hold, which holds context related properties. And the main usage for this is to store values that can be used in subsequent test steps or related steps. For example, in the code which is highlighted in red, this will create a property named my property in the context and assign it with the string name hello. Then we have the log object which is a standard logger objects. So this is these are those three variables that are used in the script test step. <coughs> execution flow test steps. Although the initial flow of test step execution in any test case is sequential, there are a number of test steps that allow you to do branching, looping, etc. also. For example, the condi conditional go to test step. This checks for specific values in the most previously received message in the test case and jumps to a correspondingly configured target test step. The delay test step. This pauses the execution of a test case for a configured number of milliseconds. Then the run test case. This transfers the execution of the test case to the specified target test case, setting properties on this test case as configured. This allows for powerful modularization of test cases which can be useful when, for example, the same sequence of test steps should be run in the beginning of a number of test cases. Then we have the data source loop. This is used for iterating over a sequence of test steps for each row in the configured data source. Common test steps actions. All test steps have a number of actions available from the right click menu. Some of these are the test step specific and some which are common for the for all of the test steps in general. So the first 
option that we uh, see when we right click a particular test step is run from here. This starts the execution of the test case from the selected test step which is very useful for debugging, debugging purposes. Then we have the open editor. This opens the corresponding editor window for the test step and although this can also be achieved by double clicking the test step. Then we have the enable and disable test step. The test steps can be enabled or disabled which allows you to selectively work with different test steps. The disabled test steps are grayed out in the navigator to the left and the list of the test steps. Then we have the insert step. This inserts a new test step at the position of the selected test step as opposed to the toolbar at the top which appends to the test case. So like if we use the toolbar in the top to add a new test case, it just appends a test case towards the end of all the test cases. But insert step inserts a test step exactly at that position. Then we have rename and delete. This prompts to rename or delete the test step. Test case names must be unique in the test case. Then we have move or clone to other test cases. We've discussed this also. Test steps can be cloned or moved to other test cases in the current workspace. If the target test case is not in the same project as the current one, you will need to clone depending interfaces as well if such test steps are selected and their corresponding interface is not available in the target project, such as rest or soap. Then we have move up or move down. They can be moved up or down in the list of test steps which will naturally change the order of test step execution when the test case is run. Now it's time for a quiz. Question number one. What, do we, what key do we press to clone the test suite or test case? F10, F11, F9 or F1? Question number two. What does the test runner object do? The answer to question number one is the F9. And the answer to question number two is that the test runner is the object that is actually executing the test case by cycling through the test steps in the test case and executing them. This is the end of the quiz. And this is also the end of lecture 19. Thank you.